Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am officially on the fourth and final week of my Whole30 challenge. If you are new here, I have been doing a Whole30 series, just keeping it real about my experience completing my first ever Whole30 challenge. I talk preparation, execution, and the aftermath each and every week as I complete this Whole30 challenge. So if you haven't seen my other videos, I highly suggest that you roll those back. If you have been keeping up with my journey though, you may have noticed that I didn't do a week three review video last week. And honestly, I just, I didn't have the bandwidth. Last week was a lot to say the least. Um, I started on a new team at my job and I went through a lot in my personal life. So it kind of took everything that I had just to stick to the program on a personal note. I was all over the place between offices and trainings and meetings with clients and then I like didn't have a lot of time to, you know, loungely make my breakfast in the morning or just like casually make my lunch during the middle of the day. So I had to do a lot of like prep and forward thinking last week and I had to make sure that I had everything that I needed so that I didn't fail. And then let me tell you what, my cravings came back last week with a vengeance. So one of Whole30's goals is to kind of help you identify and curb your cravings. And I can admit now, and I think I always knew this, but last week was, was eyes wide open. I am an emotional eater. I wanted to snack all day long for two days straight. I wanted to eat sweets so bad. I just felt like that was the one thing that would make me feel better is if I just got to lay on my couch and eat sweets and veg out and no judgment. The last thing that I wanted to do was cook. So it took everything in me to prioritize my health last, last week. And I can proudly say that I did not crack. I kept my head down, focused on my work, and kept my health and my headspace at the forefront of my priorities, and it worked. I, I made it out the other side. I didn't break the meal plan. I didn't drink alcohol, smoke nicotine, anything crazy like that. I successfully maintained the Whole30 lifestyle during a really stressful and just overall hard week. Now on Saturday, I had this really big birthday event and it was for a friend of mine and we were taking party buses and going up to the mountains and going to wineries. And it was really the first major event during Whole30. I mean, I've been out to like bars and dinners and hanging out with people, but this was the first like major event other than New Year's Eve where I just chose to not drink. So I wanted to talk about this for a second because I think it was really eye-opening to test myself in a situation like that and just kind of see how I responded and felt about it. One, I was at a winery and on a party bus all day, but dr not drinking was not hard for me, honestly. So I bought these little um, fizzy tea drinks. Um, it was kind of hard in the store to find um, mocktail style drinks that I could drink on the bus and that didn't contain any added sugar or anything like that. But this is literally just carbonated tea and it was phenomenal. And I had little cans and it felt like I was drinking a seltzer the whole time I was on a bus. I think it really helps to have a like mocktail style drink whenever, whenever you're in like high intensity alcohol infused situations, because it just kind of takes the pressure off and there's no eyes on you and nobody's asking you questions, but thing you also still feel like you're engaging in the activity with everyone and you're still like a part of the conversation and just a part of the activity but you're not drinking so it's kind of like a placebo effect maybe type of situation and then we were gone all day so it was like seven eight hours it was like two hours up there we spent a couple hours at wineries two hours back and i knew that i was not going to be able to eat any of the food at the restaurants or what was on the bus or anything like that so i bought rx bars and lara bars and i took a couple of those with me and then i just snacked on them like throughout the day obviously it wasn't as satisfying as what some of the other people were eating but um it satisfied me enough to get me through the day and i wasn't drunk so i didn't i wasn't like you know becoming incapacitated by not eating enough. <laughs> I wasn't gonna like black out because I didn't eat enough food. So I was fine, it was okay. And um, it worked. 
I think the biggest takeaway from that event was showing myself that I could go to these events and spend this whole day and have all of this fun with my friends and still participate in the activities and have such a good day and I didn't need alcohol to do it. At no point did I feel uncomfortable or like left out of a situation. I was just there like everyone else and, and having a great time and I just wasn't drinking. <laughs> oh. And um, probably the best side effect was I spent zero doll hairs yesterday. Other than what it costs to like rent out the bus and all of that, I did not spend any money yesterday. I didn't buy any drinks, I didn't buy any food, none of that. So my pocket was very, very happy. Okay, so now let's talk week four prep. I was super into how cheap my grocery bill was last week. If you haven't checked out my Whole30 on a budget video, I highly, highly suggest you do. I will link it below. But after seeing how possible it was to eat affordably on the Whole30 program, I took the same approach this week. Really the only difference was that my fridge was almost cleared out this week. I pretty much used all of the food that I had. So I didn't have as many stock items from my own fridge to choose from and base meals off of, but it still didn't come out bad. So for breakfast this week, I am going to do the breast breakfast stacks from week two, um, if y'all remember those. There's sweet potatoes with avocado and egg and bacon on top. I just thought that they were a really simple meal, but like super tasty and really filling. So I'm gonna repeat that this week. And then for lunch, okay, so I have learned that lunch and dinner go hand in hand. Um, they're super interchangeable. I may plan something for lunch one day and decide to eat leftovers. I may plan to cook one night and say I am so not in the mood to do that tonight and eat my lunch again for dinner that night. They, they kind of go hand in hand. For lunch this week, I am making a chicken salad that looks so good and so easy. If you don't know yet, I love a lunch that can be prepped in full for the week and this chicken salad fits the bill. And then for dinner, um, my friend actually told me about this recipe that she found on TikTok. It is sweet potato with like buffalo chicken inside and bacon on top. And it looks absolutely phenomenal. And she said it was one of like the best and easiest things that she's made in a while. So I'm going to cook that. I'm just going to do it Whole30 style. Um, it's pretty simple to recreate in Whole30 form. You just gotta use like Whole30 appropriate buffalo sauce, which I chose to use the Primal Kitchen sauce. And just like some minor tweaks, like use ghee instead of butter and things like that. Um, but I am going to do that this week. And then when I was combing through my Aldi and Kroger apps, I saw that shrimp was on sale at Aldi and I already have a head of cauliflower left over. So I am going to make this spicy shrimp with cauliflower rice. And then finally, I am going to do this creamy BLT chicken recipe. I chose this one because the shrimp recipe calls for this Kite Hill um, Whole30 compliant cream cheese, which I didn't even know that there was Whole30 compliant cream cheese that existed. So I only had to use one tablespoon of that. So this chicken recipe calls for the rest of it. So I'm not gonna waste any of it, but I am super excited to kind of see what this cream cheese is all about because Obviously, since eliminating dairy, a lot of like the creamy texture that happens in a lot of like regular cooking is kind of lost. So I'm super excited because I think that this cream cheese may give me that like creamy, milky flavor back. So I will link the brand below for this cream cheese because I was super excited when I saw that there was one of this. Um, one of these cream cheeses available on Whole30. So I will link that below and that is going to be my final dinner recipe for the week. So after going to Aldi and Kroger, I ended up spending $112.97 for all of my groceries this week. And that is for seven days, three meals a day, so 21 meals. And that comes out to $5.37 per meal. Not too shabby. So a few more couponing tips that I wanna share with y'all that I learned this week. So I quickly learned that there are way more coupons and rebate options for non-grocery items um, than there are for grocery items, but I still managed to save some money this week. I also learned that every single store pretty much has their own app. Trader Joe's does not, but every every like other major store pretty much has their own app. And then there's also um, like couponing apps in general, like coupons.com. So, and then I told y'all about Ibotta last week, which is uh, probably the most well known and 
often used rebate app out there. So what I chose to do is just focus on two grocery stores. I found that trying to like do them all and figure out which one has the best deal and da 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 is too much. There's way too much out there. I just needed to focus on two stores and learn how to use their app and their savings really, really well. And then kind of as I get more comfortable with you know, how to do couponing these days and the strategies that are used and all of the different apps and, you know, digital coupons versus paper coupons versus printable coupons. It's a lot. So I just focused on two stores this week, Kroger and Aldi, and then I continued to use the Ibotta app. Okay, so let's talk about this. Look at this. I had no idea that this existed. So at Kroger, I'm sure everyone has seen the yellow like Kroger Plus card savings, um, like sales tags. But then if you look right underneath them on items where there are digital coupons, there's this little green tag with a QR code on it. And if you actually scan, so first off, you need to have the Kroger app downloaded onto your phone, have an account made, and make sure that your Kroger Plus card is linked. And then when you see these digital coupons, you can scan them. They will automatically go into your app. And then when you go to check out and punch in your Kroger Plus card number, the coupon automatically goes like off of your total. Like it automatically goes to your receipt. How cool is that? Had no idea that they existed. I have been shopping in Kroger forever and I have never once had those green, you know, QR codes catch my eye. Fun fact. Okay. Also, and then on both apps that I use and the Ibotta app, there is this scan feature. So what you can do is you can actually scan the barcode of any item and it will pull up whether or not there are coupons available, sales on the items, or any rebates. So what I started doing is at checkout, I just started scanning the barcode of every single item and clipping them or saving the rebates or coupons that went with them. And trust me, it is so much easier than sitting there and like searching for every single item that you're, that you need to look for. No, just scan the barcode. It's so easy. You can save it right to the app and then go back to it. And of course, save your receipts. Not only will you need to actually take a photo to upload your receipt to Ibotta, but a lot of stores will give you cents off um, on, on the Ibotta app simply for shopping there. So like I got 10 cents off or 10 cent rebate um, from Ibotta this week simply for shopping at Kroger. So save your receipts, scan your receipts. So I am no couponing guru yet, but I did save $4.91 at Kroger today and a dollar and 10 cents um, rebate on the Ibotta app. So I know that that might not seem like a lot of money, but if you do this every single week, it does add up. And then obviously as you get more comfortable with kind of the processes and strategies of couponing, you could really start to like add up your savings. And at the end of the day, if people are going to offer you money to buy products or offer you money off to buy products that you were already going to buy, why not save the money? Why not get the money back? Meal prep this week was relatively painless. All I had to do was prep the chicken salad, which was insanely easy to make. I just had to poach the chicken and then, which is, is essentially like boiling it. And then I had to shred it, which if you have a hand mixer, pro tip, use the hand mixer to actually shred the chicken. It's so much easier than doing it by hand. It's just way easier, way quicker, just, Trust me, invest in a hand mixer also if you don't have one. But then other than that, all I had to do was combine all of the ingredients into a bowl, mix it up, put it in the fridge, let it chill, and it's all ready to go. It's so easy. Week four is shaping up to be a very strong closer to the end of my very first Whole30 challenge. I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this month so far, and I am super excited to feel the accomplishment at the end of this 30 days. If you haven't already checked out my other Whole30 series videos, go ahead and take a look at them so you can really get a feel for my journey as a whole, kind of where I was and hopefully where I end up at the end of this 30 days. And stay tuned for my Whole30 review video next week. I'm going to go over my pre-thoughts versus my post-thoughts on the challenge, um, kind of the cost of completing the challenge, my before and after photos, and I'm going to clue you into kind of what's next on my health and wellness journey. As always, thank you so much for joining me. If you found this video helpful or informative, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on my health and wellness journey. And 
I will see you back next week.